Amen. Jesus really is wonderful. Yes, he is. Yes. Amen. I am grateful for each and every one of you in your respective places. Today is going to be a little different. We're going to uh, kind of talk through some things. Uh, there's a few people here in the audience uh, that uh, may participate. We're not going to necessarily have us on camera, uh, but our our message today might end up being a little conversational. Uh, it, it just depends on how things go. But we're going to allow God to be God in that situation. <sighs> and, uh, and, and just kind of talk through some uh, very important things. Um, what I want to talk about today, let me give you your scripture, is in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. And... Uh, Give you just a second. Matthew chapter 6, and we'll start at the fifth verse. Uh, for those of you that are, are hunting and searching. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at the fifth verse, uh, says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. But verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall by, be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner pray ye, after this manner pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes. For if ye forgive mend their trespasses, mm -hmm. your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And I, I want to talk uh, a little bit about uh, viral unforgiveness. Viral unforgiveness. Uh, uh, full full transparency. I was in a conversation this morning, and 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 this came up. It kind of changed the order and direction of what we were going to talk about uh, today, <coughs> because many of us still struggle with viral unforgiveness. the The viral part of it is that it's something that's happening in your system that's not always conscious. Yeah. It's not always something that you're uh, consciously doing or having done to you, but you're still suffering the effects of it. Oh. You know, I, I still have a little, uh, Apostle says she was having a little pain, you know, and we don't know what the pain is from, but something happened, right? Something happened. You you might have a little sniffle. You may have a little, I don't know what it is, but uh, I got a little headache. You know what I'm saying? And and what happens is that those symptoms, those symptoms are showing you a deeper underlying problem. Is that fair enough? Yes. Amen. All you see is that you're sneezing. 
all you recognize is a little stomach ache. Or maybe you, you got the runs or, or something like that. Those are symptoms. Right. That's not your condition. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the symptoms are indicators of a greater situation happening in you yeah. that's causing the symptoms to manifest. Okay. And if the symptoms aren't well managed, sometimes they grow mm -hmm. into a greater problem. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. This is what happens, and, and our virus that we're talking about today is not COVID, it's not the flu, it's not none of those things. Make sure you get your flu shots, by the way. Uh, but it's, it's not all of that. It is viral unforgiveness. There are things that have happened to you in your life at a point. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these things are things that happened a long time ago. And because they happened a long time ago, you're still there. You're still there, and they create blocks, uh, barricades, places where we're not willing to go in our lives that, that we don't get past. Our, our method of dealing with it is that a lot of times it's suppression and not forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we haven't gotten over it, we just deny it. Mm -hmm. Or we ignore it. Or we try to block it out of our thoughts. Or another good one is avoidance. Yeah. I just don't go there. And, and it's only when you go to that place that you realize that there's still something there. You try to avoid it. And then when you get to that place, then all of a sudden you feel the same way you felt before. Psychologically, there's people, there's people that go into a business. I, I met some people. They have a business of smell. And they and they have their whole company is that they create fragrances so that when you go to a certain place, it smells a certain way, and that is supposed to put an imprint in your mind that says, I'm at this place. Like, for instance, the chicken joint. There's a smell that is Popeye's chicken. Right. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough? Uh -huh. Now you cook chicken. But when you cook chicken, it don't smell like Popeye's. <coughs> and it smells different when you drive by Popeye's than when you drive by Lee's. Yeah. And they're both cooking chicken. True. Because part of the recipe is the smell. Okay. So that when you drive down the street, you smell certain chicken. Mm -hmm. And you say, ooh. Yeah. That smells like <laughs> KFC when you go there because the smell is working on your psyche. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That way, and that and that's not by chance or coincidence. That's intentional. <laughs> that's part of the whole marketing strategy. They could filter out the smell. They could they could have enough air air filter systems and, and stuff like that to where outside you don't smell it. But they want you to smell it. Because that when you smell it, it works on your psychology and it makes you say, I want that. The same way that that's working on your psychology, it works on your psychology to say, I don't want that. I can, I can smell uh, I almost said that really bad. Uh, I can smell walnuts. And if I smell walnuts, I don't even go by the table. I can smell pecans. You know, I, I can smell them. And I'll know, or, or somebody's eating some, and I'll be like, 
What is that? And and they, and they think they're cute. They say, he, he don't know the difference. I can smell it. You don't have to give it to me. Just, just knowing that they're there, I smell it, and automatically my stomach starts turning. I get that, you know, the wet mouth, like you're going to throw it. It's, it's, it's the worst thing imaginable, right? I, I, I haven't eaten it. I just smelled it, and it took me there. And I want to get away from you as soon as possible, right? Uh, because I, the, the psychology of that smell is still working in my life, and it's still working on me. So if smells work that way, like it does at Popeye's, <clears throat> excuse me, like it works with the nuts <clears throat> and all of that, it stands to reason that there are some things that you've been through, mm -hmm. maybe some places that you have gone, that if you smell it, it takes you back psychologically to that same place. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, not, it's not taking you there in a good way it's taking you there in a way that reminds you of all the pain and suffering and everything that was wrong in that situation. So, so that's just one facet of how we remember our trauma. We remember our pain. Remembering the pain, as, as simple as I put it, is unforgiveness. Mm. Remembering it just like I did with the nuts, just like I did with the Popeyes, remembering it like that, when it starts to work on your brain and trigger how you feel in this moment, it's unforgiveness. When forgiveness happens, you don't remember what it is. You might smell it, but it's not affecting you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yes. It, it, you're, half, you're experiencing it, but it doesn't take you to a place. Okay. The place that you're struggling with, sit up, <coughs> sit up. The place that you're struggling with is not a place that's actually traumatizing you now. It's, it's ministering to your memory. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, we already have alarms and barricades and all kinds of stuff set up to make sure that we don't ever go to that place again. Mm -hmm. And that's unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. now, now, God forgives, doesn't he? Yes. Yep. He, he's good at it, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He, he, takes, he yeah. takes your sin and he throws it. Where is that he throws it again? And the, the sea of forgetfulness and remembers them no more. This is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. When he says, I threw it away. And I don't even remember it. That's what God said. I know he's perfect. And I know, you know, you're not God, but we're trying to be like him. Yeah. Right. He threw it into the place to where I smell something, but I don't know what it is. <coughs> like he's never had chicken before. <laughs> There's an aroma, but I'm not familiar with it. And then we oftentimes remind him, oh, that's Popeyes. Because we're very conscious of what it is, where he is not conscious because he doesn't remember it. And, and I know I'm messing up some religion right now, because we've come from a church background that said God is going to get you for what you've done. Thank you for those amen. Amen. We, 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 we say, God, you you going to reap what you sow. Right. Yeah. That's what we do. You can't do what you did and get away with it. And it might be 50 years from now, but God is going to get you. So we're hanging 
under the expectation of God's vengeance rather than living in the presence of his grace. And I figured it out. You know why we don't live and enjoy his grace? Because we're vengeful. And we can't imagine that he would be as forgiving as he is because in our hearts, there's some things that we know that we just wouldn't forgive. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And we pray, we pray that we never have to experience those things. We pray that we never have to go there, but we never deal with the trigger that caused us to smell. It's just, I just avoid all chicken at all costs. I'm eliminating chicken out of my life. I will never smell chicken whether it's Popeyes or Lee's again. And we swear off chicken. When actually chicken is important to us, it's just how we associate our last experience that makes it bad. Do you know, do you know that some people have that exact feeling about church? Yeah. Do you know that the reason why some people won't go to church has nothing to do with how good your church is? It has nothing to do with the word of God. They're not even mad at God. They're not even mad at the pastor. They're mad because it was a mean lady in church back in the 80s that got on my nerves and she picked on me and my sister and I said I ain't never going back to church again. And so now when you say church, it automatically takes them to a place of rejection and they shut down because they're shutting down at the idea not of serving the Lord and worshiping him in the spirit of beauty of holiness, but they're shutting down on the idea of the mean lady that messed with them in the 80s. Because here we are 40 some years later and we still haven't forgiven the mean lady. And we associate every lady with being the mean lady. And then the, and that mean lady had on a perfume. <laughs> and when I smell a perfume, yeah, I say, you smell like the mean lady oh, Lord. in the 80s. And that's why I don't like going to church. Yeah. And, 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 and here we are, holy, we're, we're sanctified, uh, we're, we love God, we pay our tithes, but we got this root of unforgiveness that we still have not released about a lady that's probably gone to heaven, we hope, <clears throat> from way back in the 80s. <clears throat> and it's still governing our lives. <clears throat> and, 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 and when it's governing our lives to this degree, it puts us in a very bad place, Regina, because now God is watching how we deal with it. How do you know? Because Jesus said, if you don't forgive, then your father ain't going to forgive you. That means he's checking the record. That, that means he's watching, he's watching over your heart and how you do and how you live every day to see now how she going to act. Now what is he going to do? And as soon as we shift, as soon as we smell it, as soon as we react, as soon as that thing resurfaces in us, it takes us to an ugly place, doesn't it? Say amen. amen. Good, I'm glad you're paying attention. <laughs> it takes us to an ugly place. It takes us to a place that we don't want to be in. We don't even want to be that person no more. And that's why we left. Do you know, do you know some people move out of state just to avoid... The, the, the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't even, I don't even want to be in Missouri. Yeah. I'm going to Wyoming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I'm moving to Wyoming. I ain't never coming to Missouri ever again. You know the only problem with your solution? You taking you to Wyoming. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and when you go to Wyoming, you're taking all of your Missouri with you. Because and, and Missouri is not the problem. 
There's no piece of dirt Amen. in this state that's causing you to have this experience. It's not even the chicken. It's just the smell. It's just the mean lady that was way back in the 80s. That thing can be over if you will let it be over. But the problem is the virus is, is manifesting in your system and it's multiplying to the point that you can't function and the virus is taking over you. Our resident doctor is here with us today and I, I thought about COVID and I thought about what made COVID so uh, terrible uh, to us in, in society. And the, and the thing, if I, if I remember it correctly, you can probably give me the T on it a little bit better. But the thing about COVID is that it's not just that you had a virus, but it was preventing your antivirus stuff from working. Is that right? It, 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 was, like, it was like violent uh, virus. It, it's, it's like we making you sick and we keeping your healers from working. And, and so, and so, whereas normal, you catch a cold, you you drink some orange juice, you get your vitamin C, and and you 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 pick yourself up, and you do all right. You drink all the orange juice you want to, because we we killing your orange juice workers right. from working, and 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 that's why people were dying. Uh, they weren't necessarily dying from the COVID; they were dying from the other stuff that they couldn't fight. Because their fighters were not working. Okay. It's the same thing that happened with AIDS. It's an anti-autoimmune yeah. deficiency mm -hmm. uh, sy sy syndrome, right? Yeah. You, know, you, you, you don't die from the AIDS, you die from the cold because your immune system is not working. Right. Yeah. And the same thing happened with COVID. You don't die from the COVID, you die because you got a cold and you can't fight it. Mm -hmm. You never knew how bad colds were. Until COVID came. Yeah. What, what COVID did was it fought your ability to fight the cold. Mm -hmm. And left you exposed to your real weak self. Wow. And then the cold that you just figure I'm going to take a little night quill and feel better in the morning. Oh is now taking you out. Mm -hmm. This is what viral unforgiveness does to you. It's breaking down your uh, immune system to the point that other little things that really shouldn't even trip you out <laughs> right. is, is, is taking you out. You, you, you leave church. You leave God. You leave, you leave your husband. You leave your wife. You abandon your children. You quit your job. You can't handle nothing. Everything is causing you to have a meltdown and a breakdown, and you wonder why it is that you are so uh, emotionally, socially, whatever kind of way unstable. It's because your immune system has been broken down for 50 years by unforgiveness. And, you, and you're walking around right now wishing that somebody would fry chicken. <laughs> If I smell chicken, I'm coming over there and burn this mother down. Mm -hmm. That was a movie thing. Y'all didn't get it. Everybody didn't get it. But uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> why? Because unforgiveness has, has been so rampant in your system. And, 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 and some of us have a quicker trigger than others. Mm -hmm. and, but that trigger is tied to unforgiveness. What if you just got over it? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I was looking at my study here. It, let, me, let me read this definition. It, it's going to be nice for you. This is the definition of forgive. Okay. All right? Here it is. It's not very complex. <laughs> First of all, it, it's over 140 times in the New Testament. <laughs> so I think it's important. <laughs> if, it's, if it's in the New Testament, That's 140 okay. times. You might, you might need to know about forgiving. <laughs> Amen. And, and it sometimes means to let go. Yeah. <laughs> That's simple enough. Yeah. To leave behind. Mm -hmm. To dismiss. Or even cancel a debt. It's used for the forgiveness of sins by God. Implying also the canceling of the guilt. We are to forgive others 
who do us wrong the same way that God forgives us. That's it. That's it. Let it go. Leave it behind. Cancel the debt. Cancel the guilt. Don't you find it interesting that Jesus has an opportunity to teach his disciples to pray? They're asking him. We see you going over there doing all that praying and stuff like that. Why don't you teach us to pray like you pray? And then he gives them the prayer. Our Father. Yes. <laughs> Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will gonna be done. And he slides it in there because that's how he does. <laughs> and forgive us our debts. <laughs> As we forgive our debts. Sometimes, sometimes we, we, we misinterpret the King James on that. When he say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. What that really means is forgive us our debts the same way we forgive our debtors. Mm -hmm. Not, not right. as we do it. <laughs> but the same way. When you get ready to forgive me, Jesus say, this, this is what you prayed. This was, when y'all was praying, <laughs> this is what you asked God to do. You say, forgive me the same way I forgive people. And I don't think you mean that. I, I don't think you really want God to forgive you the same way you forgive people. Because that would mean that he forgave you on the outside, but on the inside he still got a little grudge. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. that, would mean, that would mean that he, he's saying that you forgive him, but really what he's saying is he don't fool with you no more. I mean, I don't think that's how you really want to be forgiven by God. I, I don't think you'll say, I'm just saying this because I got to forgive you to go to heaven. I, I don't, that ain't how you really want God to look at you. You really want it to be over with God because if, you, if your sins are not forgiven, then, you, you know, you can't go to heaven uh, with one sin. <coughs> not, not just one little white sin, but just like none. So all your sin have to be forgiven or else you on the outside looking in, not even looking in. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. So how many of y'all want God to forgive all your sin? Amen. And, and, and the only way he's going to do that is if you forgive. That's right. Now, now, now the traumatic part of it is, and I know how you feel, I felt the same way. But what I found out is that the traumatic part of it is, is that the things that happened to you were really bad. And they were, they were really painful. And you just don't know if you can get over it. Somebody did something to me. You know, I was bullied. And I, I had I had to laugh at myself. I was bullied, and uh, when I was in the uh, kid, kid, grade school, right? I was bullied, and then I saw I started calling my name, uh, the person. I saw the person, and we was in our forties. And when I saw the person, my mind went all the way back to elementary school. This is pitiful. <laughs> Don't laugh, pray. You know? <laughs> My mind went all the way. I felt anger from elementary school with my sanctified, anointed, apostolic self. And I was sitting there thinking, like, I wanted to fight him. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? I want to fight him. I said, I bet I, I bet won't be no bully in the day. I bet. My mind went all the way back to the Popeye's chicken. Mm -hmm. And he was just walking down the street. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and, and my heart was still in the fifth grade. Right. Wow. And, and, and I can't tell <coughs> God that I had forgiven him. 
God was going to say, well, what meaneth the bleeding of the sheep? What's all that attitude that you just had? You swole your chest up. You know what I'm saying? You lather it up like you Rocky Four. So what, what, what is all of that if you forgive it? Some of us are still doing stuff. Not what we did back then. We're still doing stuff. And God has forgiven us. Amen. Amen. And we're talking about what somebody did back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. You know what's crazy? He don't even remember it. When he saw me, he was happy to see me. It was my boy from back in the day. What's going on? No, don't back in the day me. Uh, I didn't have much money back. Right. You know what I'm trying to say? I mean, like, I won't, I, won't, I won't shake him down for my dollar 25 that you got out of me. You know what I'm saying? See how crazy I look? 40-something talking about lunch money? He's over it. And I'm still sick. If that's what's happening in my heart, then how did it affect every other relationship that I had? How did it affect other people that I came in contact with? Did I love them? Did I show them the love of Christ? Did I embrace them? Or was I guarded and saying, I don't even let people get close to me like that because you tried a little bullying stuff on me. I'm coming for you. I mean, how do we look to the world? And you know what's dangerous? I, ain't, yeah, I probably won't have time to get into this, but you know what's dangerous about viruses? They spread. They spread. Mm -hmm. And so now you put your sickness off on everybody else. Now everybody else is sick about something. They weren't even there but you in, in grade school, but they still got issues mm -hmm. with people that they don't even know. That's why some people don't like you. Yeah. Yeah. Because of what you did to somebody else in grade school. Yeah. You wonder, why does this person have an attitude with me? Why do they always roll their eyes at me? They caught the virus. Yeah. The virus of unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised, you spread it. Jesus tried to give you the antidote. He did. He tried to give you the prescription. He said, if you do this, this will heal you from all of your viruses. Okay? Here's what he said. Love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Do good. <laughs> He's, what the world is wrong with Jesus? <laughs> what he there when he took my lunch money? He said, if you take your lunch money, Give them extra. Because <laughs> as soon as I get free from the control of the pain of the virus and what he did to me, and I don't let that weigh so heavily in my life, then I can get over it. Then I can let it go. But I haven't let it go, which is the definition of unforgiveness, because to forgive means let go. Amen. See, it started way back in Genesis when they ate the fruit. Amen. You know what was supposed to happen when you eat the fruit? I say, do you know what was supposed to happen? When you, I've lost my whole congregation. They, they very polite, but they are. Uh, you know. What's supposed to happen when you eat the fruit? You're supposed to die. The day that you eat this fruit, ye shall surely die. That wasn't supposed to happen. You know what happened when she ate the fruit? She was spiritually dead. That's 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 uh that's churchism. That's churchism. God don't have to kind of kill you. We, we, we put our spin on it and say, well, she died spiritually. 
There was a fall of man. Yeah. She was separated from her relationship with yeah. God, yeah. but God didn't kill her. Yeah. Amen. When Adam ate it, God didn't kill her. Yeah. He put them out the garden. Right. There were some consequences for what they did, but they didn't die. Amen. They eventually, Adam lived 935 years. Mm -hmm. Death was not death was not the immediate consequence because God wasn't operating in wrath, but death was actually a function of love. Yeah. I said death yeah. was not an immediate consequence right. because he wasn't operating in wrath, but death was a function of love. Amen. Why is death a function of love? <laughs> because if it wasn't for death, then you would have to live forever in sin, yeah. which would guarantee that you could never, ever go to heaven. Nor could you experience heaven on earth. If, if it wasn't for death, then the plan of salvation would not work. Amen. The plan of salvation says that because Jesus was innocent and he died for the sins of you that was guilty, then, then the same way that his innocence died, your guilt died. Yep. And therefore he put his innocence on you. It's the concept of the sacrificial lamb. Is taking something that's innocent and making it pay for the one that did the wrong. And that's the ultimate version of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Is that I pay the price for what you did. Mm -hmm. And then I set you free. Mm -hmm. You got to decide do you want to be saved or not. Amen. Because salvation requires a whole lot of forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> And you can't ask for the forgiveness that you don't want to receive. And so now Jesus is trying to tell you how to be forgiven. <laughs> he said, forgive others. Amen. And my Father will forgive you. Release, release people from the debt. Release them from the guilt. Even if they don't know that they're guilty. Stop holding it against them. Stop Stop holding the grudge. Change the taste in your mouth <coughs> that you have towards them. Let it go. Pastor Candy, you're asking a lot. Is heaven worth it? Yes. You just don't know what I've been through, but God does. You don't know what I've been through. I didn't say nothing. None of this was easy. I just said it was necessary. And it's necessary not to make the other person better, but it's necessary so that you're not sick. Mm -hmm. The problem you have is not the virus that they have. The problem you have is the virus that's in you. Yeah. What do you have to do to make sure you get healed? What do you have to do to make sure you get delivered? See, that person, that, that, that fellow that, that I was talking about that was the bully, he fine. Mm -hmm. He going on living his best life. <laughs> and here I am walking around gritting my teeth. Probably go over there and get whooped all over again. You know what I'm saying? While I'm trying to be mad and tough and party. See how silly we look? Mm -hmm. What about you? Mm -hmm. What is it? What is it that you mad about that you should be over? That that right now, with the proper trigger, you will snap. It'll send you. It'll send you all the way back to elementary school. All the way back to the night. Do you know we've been in the 2000s for 24 years? Do you know anything that starts with 19 was a long time ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how crazy are we if we still tripping on something that started with 19? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's way, but it's still running our life. What, what would it take to just let it go? Mucinex? <laughs> Theraflu? What, what do you have to do to get over the virus 
that you've been carrying for so long? And how is it affecting your life? Don't you want to let it go? I'll give, you, I'll give you the prescription. It's just love. It's just love. Love is, love is what changes that. Love is what's going to break the chains off of your life. Uh, when, when God got ready to save us, he didn't say because he was so good that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't say because he was so powerful. He didn't say because he was so righteous. He said just because he loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. And his son gave his life. His son, his son chose to die for people that rejected him. Amen. For people that reject him still. Amen. He suffered. He suffered. And while suffering, <clears throat> while, while dying, <laughs> while being crucified, <laughs> while, while being in pain, while being spat upon, mm -hmm. after being beaten, mm -hmm. after being lied on, after being misused and abused, they put a thorn crown on his head. Mm -hmm. They slapped him. They mocked him. Mm -hmm. And while he was going through all of that, he said, forgive them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> forgive them, Father. Because mm -hmm. they don't know what they're doing. I mean, he's, he's letting you know how important it is to be free because you don't want to die with unforgiveness. Jesus didn't want to die with an attitude with the people that he's dying for. He didn't want to pick that moment to hold unforgiveness because Peter denied him. He didn't want, he didn't want to pick that moment to hold unforgiveness because Judas betrayed him. He didn't want to hold that moment against the Roman soldiers and all of this to, to let your enemies keep you from making it into glory. He said, forgive them. He didn't want the thief on the side to keep him from being in his right place at the right hand of God. He said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't want any moment to hinder him from the place that God was taking him to because he couldn't let it go. And then he's telling you, I want you to be blessed like this. But what you got to do is figure out how to let it go. You got to forgive like I forgive. You got to be radically free. And you got to love radically. You got to love until it looks crazy. Because people don't understand why you Amen. would die for your enemy. People don't understand how you would see them choose Barabbas and still choose to die. Mm -hmm. People of God, <laughs> this is that healthy place that God has called us to. That place, that place where we're free from the stresses that are still resonating in our lives of things that we're not conscious of, but they're making us sick. Mm -hmm. They're causing us to sneeze and cough. They're causing us to have aches and pain in places uh, that we're not currently hurting. And it's just the after effect, the breakdown, mm -hmm. the deterioration yeah. of our lives. Not just our physical lives, but our emotional and our spiritual soul because we won't let it go. I challenge you. I challenge you. I don't, I don't have anointing oil enough to cast it out. I don't, I don't have enough power to rebuke it. But you do. You can let it go. You can choose to do it today. And God will be glorified <laughs> in the healing mm -hmm. that comes wow. from your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Like no other message, like no other thing that we've shared before. That's my prayer for you today.
Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.